Hello there, my name is Phil Ruggie Jones, and I am a scholar and a pastor who works in the area of biblical performance criticism. Some of the, my claims to fame are, first of all, that I'm an Academy for Biblical Storytelling graduate and a huge advocate of the program you're involved in. I hope that you're having the experience that I had, that my storytelling went from one level up to a whole new level through the reflection and the camaraderie of the program you're now involved in. I'm also one of the co-editors of the book that you use as a textbook, The Bible in Ancient and Modern Media, and I wrote one of the chapters in that. And I coordinate a group called the Network of Biblical Storytellers Seminar, which has met for over a decade and includes professional storytellers and people who make their living in the academy, in the field of biblical studies, interacting and seeing what happens when we all gather together in the same room. So there are two different things I would like to accomplish in the various videos that you will uh, have access to in my time with you. The first is this one, and I would like to explore what biblical performance is as, as a academic field, as an approach to biblical interpretation. In subsequent ones, we'll move towards a more practical level, and I will suggest uh, strategies, things you might want to talk about when you create your own uh, performance commentary to accompany the stories you've been working so hard on. So those, that will be in two subsequent videos. In this current one, we're simply going to look at the field of biblical performance criticism. So let me get, begin with my definition of biblical performance criticism. It is a method of biblical interpretation that uses performance to interpret texts and to move toward an understanding of a, of a biblical passage's potential impact in both ancient contexts context and our own. Biblical performance criticism is a method of biblical interpretation which uses performance to interpret passages of scripture or texts and to move towards an understanding of that passage's potential impact in both ancient contexts and contemporary ones. David Rhodes, uh, whom you have read, is the person who, who created the name for uh, the discipline. He's the one who came up with the term biblical performance criticism. He wrote a very important uh, two-session two uh, treatment of it called Biblical Performance Criticism and Emerging Methodology. I will give you a bibliography and you can, you can find it there. Uh, he also has written the single most useful book, in my opinion, in terms of coming to terms with the dynamics in a story that all come together to make an impact on, on an audience. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that and unpack those dynamics in the subsequent videos. The name performance criticism has a challenge associated with it. It's a method designed to challenge the dominance of print-focused interpretive modes in biblical interpretation. That is, since the uh, 18th century on, serious academic work has thought about the, the scriptures as written material printed material even. And the way that they had the nomenclature that biblical interpretation out of this print commitment made is that includes the word criticism. This word uh, carries with it some challenges. Right? But let me just mention a few forms of criticism that were coming into vogue from the 18th century on. And then that'll give us a context of understanding why we call 
biblical performance criticism as what we're doing. Historical criticism or historical critical method is a method that uses his interpretive methods like a historian does to understand the formation and meaning of texts back in their original context. This was a hugely important uh, approach to, to biblical interpretation, almost impossible to overestimate its role in the academy up until the time narrative critics began uh, to challenge it. It still uh, carries a great deal of weight in the academy. Another um, form of criticism in this area related to it is called source criticism. Source criticism reconstructs the sources that were drawn upon to produce the text that we ourselves inherited. So sometimes they're loose, envisioned as loose oral sources. Sometimes uh, there's a compiling of different uh, written sources that it's believed that come together in the passages that we receive. And so source criticism tries to reconstruct that genealogy, that, that history behind them. There's also an area very important in this, in this group called form and genre criticism. They call attention to how types of genre, for example, a healing story, uh, shape what we understand about the stories that we encounter in, say, the Gospels. Uh, there are certain patterns and established structures of expectations that genres create, and understanding the genres that shape the biblical witness in the Gospels uh, gives us insight into what is going on in those stories. So these critics were very important. I'm not going to spend any more time going on. You can pick up almost any academic book of biblical interpretation and it will orient you towards those. The challenge with all of these methods, in my opinion, and why I personally welcomed performance criticism as an alternative, is this. When I went to seminary and was experiencing professors working out of these various uh, critical methodologies, it felt like to me, they had taken something, someone even, I loved, the biblical text, laid it out on a gurney, and were, were uh, engaging in an autopsy of it. <laughs> right? So kind of slicing the passages open, looking inside, holding up pieces of it. Oh, this is the heart. Look at this heart, right? And and chopping up the biblical narrative in this way. I learned a great deal from this kind of stepping back approach and this taking apart approach, but my frustration was the methodology was better at taking apart than at helping us bring it all back together again. In the second half of the 20th century, a methodology, another criticism called narrative criticism, became important. A lot of the people currently working in performance criticism earlier worked in narrative criticism. If you've hung around the network of biblical storytellers, names like uh, David Rhodes, Tom Boomershine, Joanna Dewey, were all people who were there right at the beginning of this movement and, and pushing the envelope, using it to, to to critique the uh, reigning historical critical methods. What narrative criticism does is it considers the, the, the biblical passage in its wholeness. That, that a gospel, for example, is a complex but carefully constructed narrative that can be critical an, critically analyzed by stepping into it and exploring elements like plot, character, uh, setting, themes, tensions, uh, words that are repeated. Right? Uh, if you, when you were reading a uh, story journey, you encountered a method that, that guided you in each chapter through exploring one of these different dynamics that are internal 
to the texts. So biblical scholars will often say the first, the historical form and source criticism, we're interested in the world behind the text. What was going on behind the text before it was produced that shaped its formation? Narrative criticism says, what's going on in the world of the text? How is the world that we encounter, the kind of imaginary world that we enter into as listeners or readers shaped? And how can we uh, look at the various strands and come to an understanding of how the whole narrative functions as one thing and not as something to be diced and sliced up? So they looked at the world within the text. So we had the world behind the text and the world within the text. Later, uh, other folks came along with more areas of criticism. So there was something called reader response criticism. The very first person who wrote in the volume that I uh, edited, the Bible in Ancient Modern Media, uh, Fowler, is very key in the formation of reader response criticism. What this school claims is that who is listening to a story or who is reading a, a passage influences a great deal what is heard. That the reader is a co-creator in the passage. Uh, this was a main theme of one of our festival gatherings not so long ago when Kathy Maxwell addressed us. I think that might have been last year, <laughs> very recently. Others uh, said, well, what if we come to the passage as a social scientist? Are there dynamics we see going on in the passages that we, wouldn't mi that we would miss if we didn't come in front of the text with this knowledge of how societies or social dynamics function? That's social scientific criticism. And then uh, there, be there ended up being a, a real proliferation of passages when we realize that who stands in front of the text matters. And so you can find criticisms that are feminist criticisms, black criticism uh, of the Bible, feminist, uh, I've already said feminist, queer criticism, Latin American criticism, post-colonial criticism, right? All of these focus on the world in front of the text. So you have the world behind the text, the world of the text, the narrative world that's put together, and those listeners or readers who stand in front of a passage and make sense of it. Right? Performance criticism cares about all of these, uh, although I think it's more situation, at least as I formulate it, it's more situated in the interaction of the world of the text with the hearers of the text. When I first started going to the, the huge guild of biblical scholars called the Society of Biblical Literature, uh, this would be in, at the turn of uh, the millennium. I could maybe hear two or three, up to five sessions in three packed days of sessions that would deal with something related to performance criticism. The last time I went, I could fill my whole dance card uh, with people speaking on it. It's really become an important field. Uh, and so your exploration of that is, is very important. This name of biblical performance criticism uh, carries with it some weaknesses. It's not without a cost. First of all, for people who are not uh, biblical scholars, any way of talking about the Bible, about Bible interpretation as criticism, carries a, a, a stronger neg negative connotation than it does in the academy. Uh, generally, uh, criticism simply means we're stepping back from something and examining it, um, kind of putting aside our biases as much as possible to interpret it. But for other people, it sounds like you're, nee, 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 this Bible is all screwed up, right? So that's one of the, the dangers. The second is that even in the academy, criticism assumes stepping back. But you've already experienced and worked enough with performance that you know you're not so much stepping back from a passage although you might do that as one moment of your preparation, but really you're stepping into the world of the passage and guiding others to, to live in that world. What's good about this common nomenclature of criticism is that it, it tells signals to the academy, this is a, 
a real academic discipline that is ready to interact with all the other criticisms on equal footing. This isn't uh, a kind of cute Sunday school thing to do. This is a serious academic way of interpreting scriptures.